a molecule that can store solar energy for years. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Kasper Muthpolsen, professor at Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg, Sweden. Welcome, Dr. Muthpolsen. Thank you. So give us a, um, a, a understanding of your areas of specialty. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm a professor in nanomaterials chemistry, so I work with synthesis of new materials and uh, developing new materials for solar energy storage. So this is what I'm going to tell you about uh, today, our new energy storage uh, system. In fact, um, let's get into that. You, you led a research team that just announced a breakthrough method mm -hmm. of storing solar energy, which is huge. So tell us about it. Yes. So. Uh, so um, we have a lot of, uh, the solar sun is the most powerful source of energy. And in just uh, one hour, um, the sun uh, provides us with more energy than our world society needs in a full year. But the challenge is that during the day, we have a lot of energy and during the night, not so much. And during the summertime here in Sweden, we have a lot of sunlight, but during the wintertime, uh, not so much. So uh, we would like to be able to develop materials that can store the energy and release it on demand uh, as a heat, uh, because 48% uh, of our energy consumption in EU is actually going into heating. So um, my research team has set out to develop an emission-free solar energy storage system that is based on molecules that capture sunlight and store the energy for a very long time and can release it on demand. So this is the basic, uh, description, I can say how it uh, of our invention, so to say. So how does your energy trapping molecule differ from traditional batteries? Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> so a little bit like a photosynthesis in plants that where the plants um, capture sunlight and convert it into stored chemical energy. Uh, but the plants, they, uh, to get the energy out, we need to burn the plants. And when we burn something, we produce CO2, that's not heating the planet, but we also produce other um, air pollutions that is not very healthy for us. So we want to create a molecule that can recreate the capturing capaci capacity of, that we see in plants, but where we can get the energy out without any combustion or without it burning anything. So our molecules, it's basically one molecular system that uh, absorbs sunlight, and then undergoes a photochemical trans, uh, transformation into another molecule. So you can say you have molecule A that captures sunlight, it's transformed into molecule B that holds the energy and stores the energy for extended periods of time. And then when we want the energy out, we can trigger molecule B using a catalyst or um, spontaneously, it, depending on the molecular design, and then we get the heat out and recover molecule A. So this creates a closed cycle but where we have the input is sunlight output is heat on demand and there's no exchange of materials to the outside world so that is a special part of our molecules uh, very shortly how long can it store energy yes so this is one of the things that we have uh, worked hard on to engineer because um, the idea of these molecules is not new it has more than 100 years old but the challenge is to make molecules that can both efficiently capture the sunlight and store it for extended periods of time. So in our recent systems, we can engineer this storage time from anything from seconds up to 18 years. So, uh, and we don't need any insulation materials because it's a chemical uh, storage of chemical energy. So it's not, nothing gets warm in our materials unless we trigger them to, uh, to uh, release the heat. What are some of the likely applications for this technology? So we are thinking of two different um, areas of applications, uh, at least. One is to um, produce larger amount of the compounds in a liquid form and use that uh, to capture the energy and then uh, release it as a, use it as a storage media to release heat on demand. Another thing is that another idea we got is to um, use the fact that this is a storage media that can store a large amount of energy up to 0.9 megajoules per kilogram. And it is a transparent. And it's the same material that absorbs the energy and releases the energy. 
So uh, uh, recently we got the idea to integrate this material into um, prototype windows, because if, if you think about it, then um, in many places uh, during the day, in maybe an office building, you get too much heat into the building, but during the night you lose energy through the windows and you would like to sit inside and look at the outside, right? And have a comfortable uh, climate. Um, so we thought, what if we could integrate our molecules into the window and by that capture some of the incoming sunlight and then uh, during the night uh, release that energy to help heat uh, the, the, the house or the building. And then uh, that would uh, help us uh, level out, so to say, the daily variations in uh, heating uh, and uh, create a more comfortable indoor climate and save us uh, some energy. So, so we think about these two applications, either a liquid form of the molecule that is more for bulk heating or different uh, heating applications or a coating that uh, levels out uh, the daily variations in, uh, in the heating and cooling, so to say. So then what does it look like so far in scaling up the technology from the lab to mm -hmm. real world use cases? Yes, yeah, so, so right now, everything we have done is very small uh, lab scale. So we are talking about uh, a few watts in our heat release devices or a few uh, square inches uh, of, uh, of coded uh, window surfaces. Um, and I, can, I, can, I actually have one uh, prototype coding with me here if you want to see it. Um, so uh, this is uh, one of our first coatings. So this is uh, yellow because it absorbs the blue light. But if I take my cell phone up here, and uh, this is, now we play a little bit, this is the sun now, then I will shine light on the coating here. And then after a little time, the coating will absorb some of this energy and uh, this will change the color of the coating. So then it becomes fully transparent. So you should imagine that if this was your window of your house, then in the morning it would be yellow, but you don't want a yellow window the whole day. So you absorb some of the incoming energy and then uh, it will become fully transparent. And then when it comes to the evening, it will release this energy and help uh, heat your home or house or office building. Uh, but you will still be able to see through the window without any yellow color during the full day. Now, my cell phone is a little bit weaker than uh, the sun, so it takes a little while, but it should, I should be able to illustrate this, I think. I think if I hold up something here, you will see that it's not so yellow in this round spot there. Yeah, this is where I've stored part of the energy from the sunlight because these molecules are sitting there in the coating. And then uh, in this prototype, it's releasing the energy during the next uh, hour or so, but we can uh, engineer this to match the daily cycle, for example so that this becomes a completely standalone uh, technology that you can uh, integrate in a future window. Wow, so, okay, very uh, interesting. So, so this is our, um, uh, the current status of our coding technology, and we are currently looking into um, making slightly larger prototypes and, the, and the, um, verifying the impact of uh, a small house or a small, uh, model house at least um, and then uh, we hopefully uh, during the next few years we'll be able to scale it up and uh, show that it works on a larger scale and um, look at some of the more applied aspects of this such as um, getting it to operate for long, many days or many years and uh, getting uh, looking into cost and a large scale production so let's talk about production so from a chemist chemistry perspective what does it mean that this technology doesn't need any rare or expensive elements? Yeah, so this is, uh, these molecules are relatively simple. Uh, they are made uh, all from carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. So there's only, uh, I mean, uh, elements that are very abundant on, on, on Earth. And in the production, we don't need any expensive catalysts or rare materials. So we have developed a scalable synthetic route that can take us from uh, starting materials that are either coming from oil or maybe in the future from uh, plant-based uh, sources. And then we will be able to convert that into our energy storage uh, molecules and, uh, and use them. So it's basically a carbon-based uh, coating or, so it's a, basically will be a plastic or like a, a very simple material, but has an uh, advanced function, so to say. Mm -hmm. 
So how are you securing funding for the next steps of development then? Yeah, so I'm uh, applying for funding from different uh, sources in uh, Sweden. So different state funding, uh, European funding, and of course also uh, now uh, we are starting to look for also more uh, commercial funding so people who want to help us uh, develop this into a real uh, technology. So this is something that uh, hopefully is going to happen during the next uh, three to six uh, months that we will be able to uh, start accelerating the development because now we are a university research group but we want to make this into a technology that goes outside the research lab so to say because I think it would be I mean it's cool that we can make it in the lab but it would be even more cool if we could make it work for people out in the world outside the lab so if we could make a small contribution to reducing uh, emissions or reducing energy consumption then we would I would think it would be extremely great. I mean, it would be very, very much fun if we could do that. So, but there are some steps uh, to be made. So uh, we, we are pl making plans for that. Yeah. Dr. Kasper uh, Mothpulsen, professor at Chalmers mm. University of Technology in Gothenburg, Sweden. Thanks so much for sharing your discovery with us. And uh, certainly we want you to get all the success and funding that you need to, to continue to move this forward. If somebody wants to find out how to do that, maybe they want to contribute uh, or just find out more about your work, how can they do that? Uh, of course, they're welcome to follow me on, on Twitter or on my group homepage. We are posting uh, news as they are coming. Uh, yeah, so Twitter, the homepage is good. They're also really, really welcome to drop me a line through email, of course. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Thanks again, uh, Casper. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.